Hey team, today I want to talk about a really useful type of workout known as a progression run. Uh, what are progression runs? A progression run is a run where you just gradually get faster throughout the run. Uh, and it serves a number of purposes. So here's one of our athletes that did a number of progression runs throughout his career. This is from the 2023 skate meet. Unfortunately, Ezra did not have a great skate meet. He was sick as a dog on that day. I probably shouldn't have let him run. I didn't realize how sick he was. But what we're looking for in a progression run is the pace starts off kind of easy. And then through the middle of the run, it sort of ramps up. And then once you've reached your target pace, you just kind of try to lock into your target pace until the end of the run. Or maybe you don't have a sigmoid curve here. Maybe the run just keeps getting faster and faster and faster until the end. Depends on what you're trying to get out of the session. So what you're going to mostly see out of this is you're mostly going to be seeing aerobic gains, right? You're going to be able to deliver oxygen to your muscles. It's going to help you run faster with less effort. Uh, you're going to have lactate thresholds. So you'll find that as you do more and more of these sessions, uh, a given pace will feel easier and easier. Maybe six minute pace feels really hard for you right now. Eventually, hopefully six minute pace should feel quite comfortable. And finally, you're going to get a good sense of what kind of paces you can and cannot hold for a long period of time. Uh, so how do we do a progression one? Well, let's look at a couple of let's look at a couple of examples that I pulled off of Strava. Both of these were last week. Uh, this is one of our athletes at Houston High School, and this is an athlete that just graduated from a local high school, pretty accomplished. He ran 917 for two miles, and he's going to be running at the local university. Uh, so both of these athletes are preparing for their upcoming cross country season uh, early in the pro early in the in the preseason progression runs are a super good way to build a lot of fitness. So you'll notice that both of them started right around eight minutes per mile, despite the fact that this guy's a 917 two miler and this guy's a 1040 two miler. Um, and then you'll notice that um, athlete A progressed fairly quickly over here, started getting down into the sixes and athlete B took a while to get down there. And that's totally expected. That's that makes sense. Uh, athlete B, by the time he got down to 704, was much closer to race pace than athlete A when he got to 704. Uh, as they progress along, you'll notice that athlete B kind of locked in at a pace that was probably fast or comfortable. And then really, during that last mile, this was almost a full mile. I don't know why Strava only said 0.9, but during this last mile, uh, he dropped it down probably pretty close to what his 5k pace is. And that's one type of run called a, a fast finish run. Uh, and you'll notice athlete A, he just kind of kept gradually getting faster and faster and faster until the end of the run. And these last two miles were probably somewhere around his threshold pace. Now, as we've talked about a little bit, threshold pace is super important. Threshold pace is the pace where if you continue to go faster, uh, it's going to get real difficult. Right. So this athlete, athlete B, was probably past his threshold pace. And if he were to try and continue to hold this 602 pace for much longer, uh, it would have been really difficult and he probably would have had to stop. Whereas this athlete, being right at his threshold, he, if he wanted to, he could have continued at this pace for another mile or two, and it probably wouldn't have been that bad for him. Um, so what we're looking at is, is, is a stronger, excuse me, a stronger, more developed athlete versus a beginner athlete. And this athlete's not a beginner beginner. He's been running for a couple of years and he's making a lot of good progress, but now he knows where he needs to go, that he needs to be able to drop down and continue to just slice the baloney a little bit thinner on his pace increases and really just figure out like what's the right level for him. He went from probably well below threshold to probably well past it and kind of missed it. So I already talked to him and I said, the next time you do this, try to drop it down a little bit sooner a little bit faster so, so maybe you run your 650 here you run your 635 or 640 here and you run a 620 here somewhere right around in there you will have found your threshold pace and you'll have figured out okay if i keep at this pace it's good but if i go faster it's probably going to be too hard all right so with beginners what can you guys expect uh when you try to learn how to run these paces well we're going to go out to the arb behind the school 
this is another one of our former athletes who's also running the college right now. Um, she just did a workout back there last week as well. I pulled this off of Strava uh, just so you can see what the loop looks like. It's pretty confusing. And uh, it's 1,200 meters. There's nothing magic about 1,200 meters. Um, this could be done on an 800 meter loop. It could be done on a mile loop. But what's important is that we can take your split every time you come around at the end of a lap, which is going to be right over here. I'll get your split every time you come around. And we're just going to hope that each time around is a little bit faster than the time before. So for you very, very beginners that are still struggling to run a couple of miles without stopping, uh, the first time around, we'll just say run easy. And then the second time around, we'll say pick it up. Uh, if you're a little bit further along and running two or three miles isn't the problem, then we'll just maybe we'll have you do three laps of this, which will equal 3,600 meters. And once again, we'll say the first lap feels pretty easy. The second, second lap may be kind of moderate and then the third lap should feel kind of hard. What's gonna be important is when we write down your split times from every lap and we can analyze them and we can see how much you progressed or we can see if like maybe you went a little too hard on lap two and you died on lap three and you actually ended up slowing down. And that, that happens all the time and it's part of the learning process and that's okay. Once you've mastered three laps doing this, uh, we'll just go to four laps. And rather than saying, well, you just need to keep getting faster after lap three, we'll say whatever your fastest lap was, that can still be your fastest lap, but you've got to narrow the gap between paces on each lap. So maybe you, you insert, maybe you did a lap in six minutes and you did a lap in 515. Well, in between them, now you're going to insert a lap at like 535. Okay. And then once you've mastered that, once three miles of, of this becomes kind of easy, then we take it up to 6K, that's five total laps. Once again, we're not really trying to get much faster towards the end because we already know you're running at a pace that felt fairly hard at the end. We're just taking more smaller steps to get to that pace. And in that process, you're really going to start learning what paces are easy and what paces are feeling too hard. All right. Once you've mastered that, we'll probably just have you do progressions on the road. Maybe we'll have you do six laps through the arm but people get pretty sick of it by that point. So we just send them out on the roads by that point, or maybe you're doing threshold on the roads by that point, or, or whatnot. This is a nice early season bridge, and this is gonna really help you guys progress in your ability. All right, so guys, those are progression runs. Thank you for watching. You can look forward to doing these in your training. And if you are not part of the Houston Huskies, but like what you've seen here, uh, please hit like and subscribe and leave a comment below. And if you want me to cover any other type of topics, I'd be happy to do so. All right.